with that, uh, before I go into the, the intentions for today, I also have a homily that was from the Feast of St. Irenaeus way back in 2017. And I stumbled upon it yesterday when I was looking for the readings in the Novus Ordo for the Mass so I could celebrate it with my parents uh, at my chapel. And, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is as true today as it is then. So before we begin the rosary, I'll just get a very short one, by the way. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to get too comfortable because it's it's a very short one, but it is so pertinent to the homo mafia running the church today, to the lavender mafia in control of the church today, to the light and the loafers sorority sisters who are intentionally destroying the church today, right up to and including Jorge Bergoglio. By the way, it's coming out that the AUSCP that homo mafia of American heretic apostate priests in the United States. They're in cahoots and in talking with uh, Cardinal McElroy, BFF with Bergoglio, about establishing gay parishes openly and notoriously without reference to the fact that, well, just listen to what I have to say right now. Because this is, this is what you need. This is a faith you need to hold on to that you must hold tightly to. All right, here we go. In no any parties of filia spiritus sancti, amen. And I'll just claim the, the homily as I did back then. We continue to use a multiple, a multitude of everyday phrases whose origins are in our sacred scripture. There's nothing new under the sun. You heard that? That's from Ecclesiastes chapter 1, 9 through 10. What has been, that will be. What has been done, that will be done. Nothing is new under the sun. Even the thing of which we say, see, this is new, has already existed in the ages that preceded us. Here's another uh, uh, phrase. Get your house in order. Okay. Jesus used that too. It's from 2 Kings chapter 21. In those days when Hezekiah was mortally ill, the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came and said to him, Thus says the Lord, put your house in order. For you are about to die. You shall not recover. That's a, that's a message we could give to every damned bishop in the United States, with the exception of Strickland. And nobody stood up for him. Fire and brimstone. We've heard that phrase. Oh, they're preaching fire and brimstone. Again, we're not preaching fire and brimstone. We're, we're preaching the, the sacred scripture. That's first found in Genesis chapter 19, 24 through 28. 28. And Almighty God's destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah on account of their same-sex lifestyle. Remember, two male angels came to visit Lot. And all the townsmen, all of them, came up and tried to force Lot to give up those two male angels so that they could have sex with them. That was what they specifically said. I got some moron Protestants out there who say, oh, no, that was God destroyed them because they were not very hospitable. What kind of moron says something like that? What kind of moron? It's right there, black and white. God doesn't destroy people for being inhospitable. Oh, no, there are four sins that cry out to God for vengeance. That being the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah, right? They were, <laughs> no. Unless by inhospitable, you mean they were trying to rape the, the male angels. That would be pretty inhospitable. But that's what the sin was. Anyway, the Bible translation we use in the Catholic Church in America translate the passage from Genesis thusly. And the Lord rained down sulfur upon Sodom and Gomorrah, fire from the Lord out of heaven. By the way, Bishop Strickland just talked about we better pay attention to what Our Lady of Akita said. And what Our Lady of Akita said was, you know, fire from the sky is going to destroy us. Well, we, this is not without historical precedence in sacred scripture. Anyway, in our translation, we hear two key words, sulfur and fire. And what I did not know when I was first researching this is that brimstone is the archaic term for sulfur. And when plain brimstone is exposed to air, nothing happens. But if a match is put to it, it will burn in a peculiar way, like a liquid fire, and it emits noxious fumes. So when our de description, our translation description, describes the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah as raining down sulfur and fire from the Lord out of heaven, it is exactly consistent with 
the Protestant translation, fire and brimstone. The King, the King James translation of the Bible often renders passages about fiery torments with the phrase fire and brimstone. In Genesis 19, God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah with the rain of fire and brimstone. And in Deuteronomy chapter 29, the Israelites are warned that the same punishment would fall upon them should they abandon their covenant with God. What do we just see in 2020? A global abandonment of the covenant with God. Elsewhere, divine judgments involving fire and brimstone are prophesied against Assyria, that's in Isaiah 30, in Edom, against Edom in Isaiah 34, against Gog in Ezekiel chapter 38, and all the wicked in Psalm 11. The breath of God in Isaiah 30, 33 is compared to brimstone. The breath of Yahweh, like a stream of brimstone, doth kindle it. This fire and brimstone stuff is not just Old Testament malarkey. Now, now watch. Because uh, a lot of people like to say, oh, this is just old stories. Right? Meaningless stories. But fire and brimstone frequently appear as agents of divine wrath throughout the book of Revelation. Uh, it's not just Old Testament. Culminating in chapters 19 and 21, wherein Satan and the ungodly are cast into a lake of fire and brimstone as an eternal punishment. Quote, and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. Look at that. Pay attention. Now, we've been warned many times in many ways that the false prophets that are coming are going to work things before our eyes that will mislead us that will lead us astray. Right, we've been warned. Okay, look, here it is right again. And with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. I'll tell you what, if the jab wasn't, if that isn't the mark of the beast, I don't know what is. And them that worshiped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. It's no joke. Revelations chapter 19. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. You know, Bergoglio said, well, people who would go to hell, they'll just go poof into nothingness, right? Kind of moron would say something like that. A damned moron. Somebody who's going to find out <laughs> exactly what Revelation chapter 20 says. That the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone and the false, where the, the beast and the false prophet are. Continues Revelation. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers. Let's talk about baby murderers, shall we? And whoremongers. Yeah. The, uh, what's that called? When you whore around uh, prom promiscuity. And sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Remember our, our blessed mother showed those three little children that, right? So the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah also are not just Old Testament malarkey, apart from the fact that Jesus himself spoke of it. Watch this. Two archaeologists believe that they have found brimstone in the ancient cities of the Holy Land reported to have suffered from the disaster. William Albright and Melvin Kyle set out to find the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah in 1924 and found brimstone at the southern end of the Dead Sea. According to Jewish historian Josephus, who wrote about Sodom and Gomorrah way back in the year 37 AD. So that's just a couple years after the death, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus. Listen to this. Now this country, Sodom and Gomorrah, is then so sadly burnt up that nobody cares to come at it. It was of old a most happy land, both for the fruits it bore and the riches of the cities. Isn't imagine affluence breeds contempt for God, contempt for God's laws, uh, self-indulgence. That's what wealth tends to do. So here you have Josephus back in the year 37 talking about what Sodom and Gomorrah used to be. 
He's a historian. He's talking about historically what they used to be known for its fruits uh, and the riches of its cities, although it be now all burnt up. It is related how far the impiety of its inhabitants. You're reading this. Here's Josephus talking about the impiety of the inhabitants, not about inhospitality, not about poor hospitality, you Protestant morons who say something so stupid. Josephus, he's there at the time of Jesus. He's a historian back in the day. Don't give me your modernist baloney. Anyway, Josephus says it's related how related how far the impiety of its inhabitants, how for the impiety of its of its inhabitants, it was burnt up by lightning, in consequence of which there are still the remainders of that divine fire and the traces or shadows of the five cities are still to be seen. So Josephus knows what he's talking about in the year 37 AD. This came from his book, The Jewish War, book four, and the chapter eight in reference specifically to Sodom. And the Lord rained down sulfur upon Sodom and Gomorrah, fire from the Lord out of heaven. That's Josephus, the historian writing this. So let us never, listen, let us never pretend that punishment for unrepentance never happened in centuries gone by, right? Watch. Punishment never happened for, for unrepentance. Pretend that it didn't happen. Let's not do that. And let us never pretend that punishment for unrepentance will never come again. We have been warned time and time again by our blessed mother that it's coming. JP2 said it in 1978 when he was Cardinal Voitia. It's here. It's not coming. It's here. There's a reason why all these phrases that I just spoke about at the beginning have entered into our common everyday usage. It is because they are true. Because they express truth. They profess sacred wisdom from Almighty God above. And that sacred wisdom, sometimes thousands of years old, still guides us today. There's nothing new under the sun. Get your houses in order. Fire and brimstone. So let's put these three together with another one of today's sacred scriptures from the Gospel of Matthew, which was chapter 17 yesterday. The wolf in sheep's clothing. Out of divine love, our Lord has shepherded us for 4,000 years with that same exact message. Repent, make straight the way of the Lord. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Beware the wolves in sheep's clothing. See, there really is nothing new under under our own under the sun in our own day. In every age, in our own age, people need to get their houses in order, lest fire and brimstone rain down upon the unrepentant. But watch. Repentance means that there actually is such a thing as sin. No, it means that, unlike Jorge Bergoglio, who said that the the Ten Commandments are not uh, are not rigid. Oh no, they were written by the finger of God in stone. We have to. There is sin. God defines it, not us, and we need to repent of it in order to receive forgiveness and receive the grace that flows from our Father's love, who will forgive anything and everything always, if only we turn back to Him and repent. So let us always beware of the false prophets of our Lord uh, and warn us about those wolves in sheep's clothing who do not preach a gospel of repentance. Remember, Callahan said to me, Bishop Callahan said to me that, those, that the bishops have failed to teach the people right from wrong for 50 years. They failed to teach them sin from holiness. So if you don't even know it's sin, you don't even know enough to repent and your eternal soul is at risk. In the end, there will be two kinds of people. Those who did not repent and suffer the consequences, which we just heard about in Revelation. Like the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Like uh, McElroy. Like Supich, right? Like Tobin in Newark. Uh, that are leading the lambs astray with their lies contrary their heresy, their apostasy, their lies, their wolves in sheep's clothing, contrary to the gospel of our Lord. Or there will be those who did repent and were blessed with divine forgiveness, like the people of Nineveh, 
like the good thief on the cross next to Jesus. Yeah. Let us repent and make straight the way of the Lord now and always.